we briefly mentioned additive synthesis in week one, when we combined several sine waves to create different waveform shapes, such as a sawtooth wave or a pulse wave. And this is really the basis of additive synthesis as a synthesis technique. So you start with a combination of sine waves, all at different frequencies and different amplitudes. So if I just add all of these in quickly, we use a combination of sine waves to create a new waveform. And you can see the different sine waves here represented as harmonics on the spectrogram. Where this becomes more interesting is where we start going in and editing individual sine waves, say, offsetting the frequencies of each one slightly. This will be subtle at first and hard to detect. Just taking off about 50 hertz, detuning slightly up or down, and you can see the frequencies moving on the spectrogram. And here the change, the waveform is certainly changing there. If I mute this quickly and then bring it back, we hear this combination of frequencies as a new waveform. We can change the amplitude of certain harmonics. Let's bring that one down, for example. Bring this one up. In additive synthesis, all of these harmonics are known as partials. Let's retune this one as well. Maybe a bit further. And this will give us an entirely different timbre of waveform. So this is the basis of additive synthesis, but this is quite limited currently as we can't control this with our keyboard. It's just one static sound. To implement additive synthesis in alchemy, firstly, we'll need to initialize the patch. And that leaves us with a single oscillator or source with there being four sources, A, B, C, and D. I'm going to actually select a sine wave for source A. And on the left here, we can open up the menu or display for source A specifically. You'll notice there's an edit option here. If we click that, we open up this view. And there are a few options here. There's a main view, an additive, and a spectral view we're going to choose additive. And this allows us to draw in our individual partials. So here's our first sine wave. We just have a single simple sine wave. I can go ahead and click and draw in some more partials. And with this mode selection here, I can choose to select just even or just odd harmonics or fifths or octaves above or below the cursor. And this partial display actually goes on quite far. We can draw in about 600 partials, it seems. So we can create quite complex waveforms if we really want to. I'm going to stick with just one partial at a time. That's already quite a complex sound. Let's zoom back in. The nice thing about alchemy and the editor here is that you can actually 
not just control the amplitude or volume of each individual partial, but also the tuning. So I can click here and actually retune individual partials. I don't know if you can hear that, maybe if I get a simpler sound, let's start again. Let's just get a few partials like this. Come into tune mode and let's actually retune these. Now I've got snap pitch on at the moment and you can see over here it's telling me how many semitones I am tuning by and it snaps to different semitone values. If I turn this off we can do fine tuning as well and get some quite dissonant sounds. Can even retune the fundamental. We can also pan the individual partials left and right giving more of a stereo image. Let's draw in some more harmonics now. Make this a bit more interesting. That's very loud. I'm going to turn the volume down. This can get loud very quickly. Reasonably happy with that sound. So I'm going to click the X here and close the editor. Now there is a sort of effects section here to the right uh, with three different menus where you can select various filtering and additive style effects. Now these aren't effects in the traditional sense. For example, the filter over on the right here is not actually a subtractive filter. So if I pull the cutoff down here, you hear those high frequencies being attenuated. What's actually happening is the individual partials are being turned down in volume as I pull this down to create the effect of a low pass filter or a high pass filter. So it's quite a unique, precise kind of metallic effect. And this can of course be modulated, perhaps with an LFO or an envelope. To create different effects. Some of the more interesting effects are here in this middle section where I can select for example stretch and what this does is it sort of stretches all the individual partials apart from each other kind of like an extreme detuning. Very dramatic effect there. This uh, string option here applies more detuning to the higher partials. So we can get some quite unique timbres here and then apply some filtering. And it's not just a combination of sine waves we can use here for our additive sound. We can actually come and select complex and then choose any other kind of waveform. For example, we could choose square waves and this means there'll be a square wave for each of these partials. This is where you may want to actually come to global settings and apply some subtractive techniques using an actual subtractive filter. We could even select some of these wavetables as the partials. Some of them work better than others. Some of them are quite abstract. And we can control the balance of the different harmonics, either odd and even, or fifths or octaves, or the volume of our fundamental over here. 
And of course, all of these parameters can also be modulated. So there's a lot to explore here and a lot of timbres and textures at our disposal.